Here we are with exercise four of chapter eight. I don't have a video for exercise three because that's just doing stuff by hand. It's uh, not too bad. I think I have full confidence that you can implement exercise three by hand. It involves implementing the full inverse algorithm for a two by two matrix. So you can see where the shortcut for two by two matrices comes from. Okay, so now here we are with exercise four. Now, in the book, I introduce you to the left inverse for tall matrices. And I said that as long as a tall matrix is full column rank, then it still has a one-sided inverse, not a two-sided inverse, but a one-sided inverse. Now, that I showed in the text earlier uh, in this chapter. I did not actually show you the uh, right inverse for wide matrices. So that is the goal of exercise four. So in fact, what you should do when implementing exercise four is to start off with a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and go through the math, go through the proof of the uh, right inverse. And you do that basically by following the logic that I presented earlier for the left inverse. And you just have to change things as necessary for the uh, right inverse and for a wide matrix. Otherwise, it's not terribly difficult. Okay, and then uh, we want to reproduce figure that we saw earlier, but using wide matrices. Essentially, what I want you to do here is copy paste the code for the left inverse from earlier in the chapter, and adjust whatever needs to be adjusted to make this also work for the right inverse for wide matrices. So that's what I do here. You can see also in this comment, I'd say start from the code for the left inverse and swap or adjust as necessary. So here I create a wide uh, matrix and I do this using uh, integers. So a, a matrix comprising integers between minus 10 and plus 10, and it's of size four by 40. So there's four rows and 40 columns. So the matrix is wide like this and flat. Okay, and then we confirm that it has its maximum possible rank, which I expect to be four. And uh, this is actually a bug. So you can see the tall matrix I called uh, variable T. This should be variable W for a wide matrix. Okay, so this matrix has rank four, which is exactly what we expect given its size and given that it comprises random numbers. So it has its maximum possible rank. That means it's going to have a one-sided inverse. Okay, and then here I create uh, W times W transpose as the matrix W times the matrix W transpose. Okay, and then here I, uh, just a quick check that this has an inverse. So um, the inverse of W, W transpose is this matrix here, or well, the uh, inverse on the right times the W, W transpose is the identity matrix. You can see it's ones on the diagonal and zeros on the off diagonal. So although this matrix here, W, does not have an inverse, and actually I can illustrate that here as well. Here I'm going to try to compute the inverse of this wide matrix W, and we get an error message. And uh, yeah, it says that the array must be square. So this matrix does not have an inverse, but uh, this matrix times its transpose does have a uh, matrix inverse, and we can confirm that that matrix inverse times WW transpose indeed gives us the identity matrix. Okay, so that means that the right inverse for a uh, wide matrix is going to look like this. So we have W transpose times WW transpose inverse. So the inverse of WW transpose. Again, that is just the complement of the logic that we worked through for a tall matrix. Okay, so here you see that uh, W times R gives us the identity matrix, but R times W gives us the matrix. So there's no errors or warning messages here. This is a valid uh, matrix product. We can multiply the right inverse by the matrix. It's just not a terribly interesting or important matrix. It's just a bunch of random numbers multiplying another bunch of random numbers. Um, so it's a 40 by 40 matrix, and it is definitely not the identity matrix.
Okay, and here we're just going to visualize everything, of course, because you should always visualize mass and data as much as possible. And um, yeah, well, this uh, figure, this is quite big here. If we zoom out, you can see this is similar to the figure for the tall matrix, and it's the left inverse. So here's the wide matrix. Here's its inverse, one-sided inverse. Here you see R times W. This is the visualization of this matrix up here. And then you see W times R when we put the right uh, inverse on the right side of the matrix, then we get the um, four by four identity matrix.